Well, happy Thursday morning to you. On the 16th day of Lent, we continue in our discussion of traumatic triumph. And today's devotional is entitled Holy and Blameless. For the recentering activity in the book, it's suggested that you pick one from earlier in our Lenten time together. I'm just going to start with a few deep breaths. So if you care to join me, you're welcome to. If there's another recentering activity that you have found, works well for you. You can pause the video, uh, participate in that, and then come back. One more time. Now we're ready to begin. Our reading is from Colossians, first chapter, verses 15 through 23. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For Christ, in all his fullness, was pleased to live for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. You must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. You know, these opening verses of Paul's letter to the Colossians focus on the work that Jesus did in order to bring peace to all of creation. Many scholars believe that Paul's words are quoting a creed or a, a hymn of the early church. The focus is Jesus. As the image of the invisible God, Jesus makes God a little more accessible. Still, Jesus remains and maintains the mystery of the glory of God. One such mystery that never ceases to astound me is that a transaction has occurred spiritually because of the work of Jesus Christ on our behalf. We are reconciled to God, made holy and blameless, and have been brought into God's presence. We who were far off have been brought near. It's not because of something we have done, but only because of what has been done for us. For those who have been built, for those who have built up a sense of self-worth based on our struggle and what we have been able to achieve in the world through our effort and striving, all this passive language around what Jesus has done for us. What could not be, have been done apart from his intervention is especially hard to settle into. It simply doesn't fit with how we see ourselves and have determined our worth. We've earned our scars, we say, and we're proud of them. Despite our pride, our hearts know the truth. We cannot do enough to merit God's favor and love. That, that treadmill of doing and achieving, earning and striving, 
doesn't really get us anywhere. We just end up exhausted. To our constant refrain, if we think of our relationship with God this way, our constant refrain of do, 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 more, 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 Jesus says it is finished and it is done. 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 My grace is sufficient for you. You are holy and blameless as you stand before God without a single fault. That last line, that truth, is something that many shame-based, trauma-affected people just cannot believe. I have trouble with it. Do you? Perhaps this is why Paul is so adamant in his instruction to the church in Colossae in the very next line. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. You know, the fact that they had to be reminded to continue means it's possible to forget. That they were encouraged to stand suggests that some fell. Needing to tell them to be concerned about drifting away from this assurance is a clear indication that we are all inclined to do so. So take heart. The struggle is real. There are scars that you can be proud of. They are on the wrists and the feet of the Savior. He earned them in order to give you the right to stand holy and blameless without a single fault before God. Rest in the assurance that this is not someone's opinion. It is fact. A gospel truth that is fundamental to all existence. It rests on the character and the nature of God in Jesus Christ. You can find rest and peace, not in your ability to do anything, but in what Jesus has done for you. Remember this day, The assurance of peace lies in what Christ has already accomplished. Other passages for contemplation today are Psalm 95 and Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. God bless you. Hope to see you tomorrow.